Look. Look at what has finally arrived. Well, it's not the Deltic. Deltic? I didn't order a Deltic. It's not the Class 37. But it's something else from a Cura scale. Let's find out what it is. Right, folks. Here we are. Here's the box. Completely untouched by time and the sword. Let's get it open. <clears throat> now, anyone that's ever got anything from a Cura scale before will know just how well they package things. And I'm certainly expecting that this time as well. Plenty of bull wrap. Good. And here we are. Oh, yes, there we are. <coughs> there we are. EWS two axle bar spoil box wagons. MHAs. So the box says normal. You get a little bit of information inside there, so let's crack it open. As always, really nice to present it. Hopefully, that's not too bright. I'll take this little pot. And of course, you get your usual information sheet about the roller stock you have. Uh, you can't really see it at the minute. There we are. <coughs> Pause that if you want to read it. Okay. <coughs> As always, really. I've got a little baggy there full of vacuum pipes and stuff should you wish to fit them uh, I of course will be doing that at some point here we are I think we'll look at the DD Schenker one. Oh yes noticeably out of the box that is super super nice sprung buffers on there of course they are look how fine that lamp iron is look at that that is lovely Really nice. Oh, that, oh, look at that. Under frame detail. That is real good. Nice little coupler on there. Jolly good. That's one. So let's get the rest of these out and have a look at the full rake of them. Here we are. So that's the full rake of three as it came from the box. Now the MHA is one known as a ballast spoiler wagon. They did also a variety of other bits and pieces, especially in departmental use. These are still seen running today, actually. So they're uh, good for 80s up until now. And of course they are really free running. Super, super nice, easy to get going with. <clears throat> this is the only one I know of that's been done in DB uh, cargo livery. And the printing has been superbly applied. Let me see if I can get the zoom. Let me have a look. There we are. Look at that. All legible. There we go. If the camera wants to focus. That's really, really, really fine. And the hook on the front there as well. All nicely done. All the brake rigging. Really good stuff. Of course, this is what you come to expect from a Cura scale. They're not shy when it comes to great detail. Let's see if we can get it to read. There is information on there. It's super fine. You probably will be able to read it. But my camera just will not zoom. So, I'm sure the question on everyone else's lips is how do these Acura scale ones fare up to the homey ones? Let's find out. So here's the Acura scale one. We'll use the uh, EWS unit for now. And here is a whole new one. Now, the, the first thing that strikes me is if you look at the whole new one, even though it's, you know, it's fairly well made. Let's look at the, uh, the brake rigging there compare the two if we can. You'll notice it's much finer on the Acura scale version and you can actually see through the wagon. See there look? As opposed to the homey one which 
you just can't see through it's all not fantastic but you know it does a job when you consider these were similar sort of price and of course the level of detail you're getting I have to question as to why you would get the homey one I got the homey one before the Acura scale ones were released um, certainly now that the, the Acura scale ones are on the market um, unless you wanted this particular style with the, the rails and the stairs and what have you you know it's just for me it's not that I'm here to go on homey or anything it's just I think the Acura scale product is much finer I mean you can see through it that's fantastic it's not just one and it's it weighs about the same, if not slightly more, than the, the homey one. I'm not sure if that's metal or not, but all this super fine detail are there. Absolutely fantastic. So I'm really, really pleased with them. Nothing wrong with the homey one, as such, but the detail just isn't quite as fine. And they'll still couple together as well, so. They are compatible, of course they are. The finesse on the Acura scale one. Just puts things a little bit more into spec for me, I suppose. But yeah, happy with that. Well done, Akira like Scout. I certainly enjoy running goals on my layout. Nice one. It's something else that I really think we should see more of with rolling stock and wagons is exploded diagrams with all the parts labelled and numbered so you can get spares. It's an absolutely fantastic idea, and I'm not sure what the extra cost of this is. But I do know that Acura Scale have managed to produce packs of three of their take on the MHA wagons for 70 quid. Now I did get mine a little bit cheaper. Uh, I got mine for about 65 quid. And of course Acura Scale do free delivery. So there's no delivery on top of that. Which puts the cost of each individual wagon the exact same. Uh, I think it's great that we've got another representation of a really popular wagon. There is, of course, variations of the two on the market anyway, and in the real world. Uh, it's just nice that, as modellers, we've now got that option. It's just a shame with the Hornby one, you just can't see through it. And be it, I mean, it's fine, it's fantastic, it is, it's, it's great for what it is, but now that the Acura scale one's here, I'm just blown away by the fact you can see through it, and it's, it's near enough the same way. I need to get to these on scales. Um, have I got some scales? Let me see if I've got some scales. So I've got the Acura, oh, the Acura scale. I've got my scales, not the Acura, the Acura scales. Come on, re-zero, you little bugger. Right, okay. They're not the best scales in the world, but it'll give us an idea. So I'll do it this way so it doesn't roll off, great. So that one is coming up at 646. 78 uh, grams, you can see that there, and the Acura scale one coming in out, and the Acura scale one's coming over to 45.77, so it's actually a little bit lighter. But I suppose when you think about it, looking at the finesse of the detail, that shouldn't be overall surprising. And when you say, well, even look at the undersides, it just becomes apparent where the extra weight comes from. Certainly, they have no issue with running and um, rolling on what have you so that little bit of extra weight oh, about, yeah, about a gram or so something like that no issues at all with that all right so we're gonna do a coupling test with the acura scales and the uh, hornby ones i shouldn't uh, i don't i don't see any issues occurring here so we've got the old little gronk there let's shove them into reverse see how it does coupling up to this single one here Nice low speed there. Of course, no issues at all. That's coupled on nicely. That's good. Pulls nicely. Let's see how it gets over those points. I'm not expecting any issues here, even over my questionable track work. All nice. No jumping, no juggering. That's lovely. Really nice. Let's switch the points. Get it reversing, really good, happy with that. Nice over the points there. No issues there, let's see how it couples up to the rest of its train now. That's lovely. We're also going to couple it to the homey ones. 
and then try and get it on the main line there. So a bit more speed this time, just to see how she goes. All of those points, no issues. Of course, there isn't where above the bit. I suppose this is where your money's going now. In a world where backmen see fit to charge people fifty pounds for a, for a, I think it's a towed brake van. I really think we have to consider where our allegiances lie in the future. Now, obviously, if you must live, you, you can't live without that new piece of roller stock from Batman, then absolutely, of course, you have to, you have to pay their price. You've, essentially, you've been held on to money. That's the only way to look at it. Here at Scale, I've brought to market a new tool wagon, with the, uh, you know, the long-established model already on the market. It runs just as well, if not better. It... It does look better, there is no arguing that. I think you have to agree the detail is so fine on the Acura scale one. There is no contest for that. For me, the the finesse of the buffers and even the little, little for example, you've got little bits of silver there just on the stanchions of the buffers and it's little details like that. 25 quid each, that's what they retail at. Now you have to buy me a patch of three, it's not a problem. You're going to want a rake of three, aren't you? And as you can see, look, no issue at all. And again, the homey ones are fine as well, nothing wrong with the homey ones. I just think if it was 25 quid for that, then it's 25 quid for that. Now those ones have been weathered, I will weather these as well at some point. I don't know, I just, uh, I can't see why you'd need to go for that one. It's 25 quid, same sort of money, they're both really affordable. But for me, the gear scale one just edges it, I have to be honest about that. Lovely. That was the main line there. That's a third degree curve onto a standard peak or point. So it's not the smoothest in the world. But as you can see there, no issues at all. They're all, all behaving themselves. That's nice. Really am pleased with that. Really, really am pleased with it. No issues at all. Really good. I thought someone said that they thought the liver was a bit bright, obviously they're pristine, they've not been weathered at all. Right guys, really happy with that. That'll do for this week. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, it's give you a bit of an insight as to where your money's going if you get something from a Cura scale there. I like it. You know what I mean? This is it's my money, that's where I've put my money. I've bought both, so I can speak on both. And it's just as they're rolling past, look. The finesse on those Acura scale ones is just superb. Nothing wrong with the Hornby one, it's fine, but it's more like, I'd expect this from a railroad version now, if I'm honest with you. I think that's where we've come. If we're now getting things as detailed as we are from a Cura scale, for the same price, I'm just at a loss as to why no one else can do it. I mean, that's a new tool, don't forget. That's complete new tooling, all these are new tooling. So there we are. Anyway guys, that'll do for this week's review. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts. Are you going to get some or are you going to stick with the tried and tested Hornby ones? Let me know in the comments. Moving on to the back to the hill thing over there. So I've been out again and I've bought a new Loco and I've done something I thought I'd never do again, which is buy a steam locomotive and a HO scale locomotive at that. So not only is it the wrong sort of type of locomotive I normally run, it's the wrong scale as well. But it is rather nice. Let's have a look at it. Okay, here we have the Roco USA Transport Corps number 2255. S160. Obviously this is not a British outline locomotive as such. These were originally American locos built and designed to run on European and UK ra uh, railways. Um, most notably for me the one up at the Keith Littenworth Valley Railway which is uh, Big Jim. Uh, which I've actually had the pleasure of visiting and being in a train pulled by it. So I've always wanted one of these and I was finally able to get one for a very good price. So let's get it cracked open and have a look at it. That's it out of the box. Come in this lovely display. Track in there. It is screwed on at the bottom there, so we'll need to release that. It comes with loads of little detail bits and pieces which we can look at swearing at later on and struggling to fit with fiddly fiddly hands. 
and it also comes with some different coupling types, um, none of which uh, will actually work with the UK rule the stock. We've got this weird little, uh, um, yeah, <laughs> one of them. We've also got a, a little loop coupling there, and whatever that is meant to be. They, they come on NEMs, but they're quite small, so I'll need to uh, modify one of my NEM pockets to fit in there, but it's all doable. Right, let's get her out and get her fired up. Here we are. She's on the track, and even better, she's sound fitted. Listen to this. Oh, yes. Marvellous, marvellous, marvellous. Now, I've not got this properly programmed in yet to, um, to JMRI. So that's something I'll have to do in a little bit, but I think we're going to have a little bit of play with this now. It is still registered to address number three, which means it is going to set the... Uh, if I don't move him, it will set this chap off as well, the 24 one. So we're just going to put him to one side for now. Get moving forward. Oh, that's delightful. Look at that! Little steam engine! So, that seems to have got the old girl working again. Got to make sure she's on the, uh, the track properly there. Let's just see if this coupling works with uh, a standard tension lock. I've got a conveniently placed wagon here. Let's see if it's actually going to work. I don't think it will. Let's make sure that arrow's in the right place there. Oh, the suspense is killing me, Roger. I'll give a bit of a help. Okay, so it's kind of on there. It's not great. Let's see how she... If she'll pull it. Interesting. So what's happening is because the couplings aren't supposed to work together, they're just sort of buffering against each other. So pulling works, pushing doesn't. That's fine. Didn't expect it to. Because we're going to look at swapping that out anyway, or maybe even fitting that other coupling to a wagon and having a a permanent match wagon. This is tender drive too, so that's actually amazing. That is brilliant. Really happy with that. So yes, there we have it. We have a steam engine back on the layout. Now, does that mean that I've given up on bottom image? No, of course not. But does that mean there might be a steam layout coming in the future? Well, over time will tell, won't it? So you'll have to watch this space, folks. If you want to see more of the S160, let me know. We can look at doing a running session with her. All right, let's crack on to see how that hillside is doing. Just look at the state of the modelling table. It's just become a jumping ground of nonsense and crap. So I need to get on that this week. We really need to get that sorted out. So I've been to the model shop and got some filler, which we're going to use on the Hill of Doom. And then hopefully, once I've done this, it's filled. We've got some new paint for it as well. Get it all seamed off. I've tried doing a little bit of scatter on there. It looks like it's going to work. It does look like it's going to work. So, all we need to do now is get started. So, I'm going to put some of this on there. And crack on. Right, that's cool. That's been done. That is the rough landscape now filled in. A lot of the potholes have been done. Don't forget, we're going to put scenic ballast on this as well. Uh, we've got a lot of flocks and things from Modern Scenics and Jarvis and things put on there. That little area is going to be where the farmhouse goes. And that's just going to be a matter of fleshing out the scene, putting fences in place, and of course, scatter, scatter, scatter. But the next phase is once this is completely dry, which it's almost there now, 
we're going to get a nice big brown base coat over all of it. Apart from on this front wall here, because I like the grey stone colour. I like that. That's going to stay. Probably going to do a little bit of dry brushing on that. Just have it stand out a bit more. Well, it's the morning after, guys. I did some scenic work last night on this little back section. I think you'll agree. That's not looking bad, is it? And of course at the end there we have a dinosaur trying to eat a horse. That was my little girl's contribution, so thank you for that one. Really happy with how that's turned out now. And all I need to do is build a wall to uh, encase it in. So essentially we're going to be continuing that wall. And I think that looks fantastic. Really happy with that. All these little stones are held in place with the, the old PVA trick. Well, they're supposed to be held in place. But probably not. Yeah, it's actually still drying, so... Mostly dry. Mostly dry. So, happy with that. <coughs> Obviously, as time goes by, we're going to have more details, a little bit of some pieces to the house. Um, wild grass and what have you. More animals and all this lot. And then we're going to join the tunnel mouth to that as well for some filler or something not too sure so really happy that turned out now and we can focus our attention on building the street scene up there put another tunnel mouth there just to give the impression that it's behind that i might even put a, a mid back scene on the back of the scenic of the street area just to frame it better i don't know a bit of artistic licensing <laughs> Then we can get on with the actual yard itself, which is a bomb site at the moment. Right folks, it's properly miserable outside today, so we're going to look at that nonsense. This is where we're at now, we've got the track in place, points are laid, ballast is drying, that bit's been held down because it, it's raised so it needs to set properly. This is all in place now, I'm going to finish building the wall today, so you'll see that in next, next week's video. This is what the front of it's going to look like. Well, yeah, quite pleased with that, guys. So thanks for sticking with us. I know it's been a bit of a, a process, but finally it's coming to an end now because that's doing other bits and pieces. So that said, let me know what you want to see. Do you want to see some more diesels? Do you want to see some more steam stuff? We looked at the S160 before in this video, so if you want to see more of the S160, you want to see a running session with it, let me know in the comments. If you want to see reviews, let me know in the comments. You want to see me flailing with messy stuff? Let me know in the comments. You've got the idea of it, which is, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. Ciao now. Bye bye. There we are. Modeling tables nice and clean. <laughs> see you next week, guys. Thank you. Bye bye.